I'm so excited to test this camera. And this video is brought to you by Squarespace. So this video is all gonna be recorded on a brand new microphone that is designed, that's designed specifically for vlogging. So listen carefully. It's not what the whole video is gonna be about. But for this first bit, just tell me how you think it sounds. There have been too many great cameras announced lately. And if you follow me on Twitter, you've seen that I'm completely torn between the new R5, R6, and A7S III. Now, out of nowhere, a huge wrench has been thrown into my plans. All right, we're gonna do a slightly different video today and it's, it's, it's gonna be really good. So I'm my, starting in my own film. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the Anya show. She is our captain today, boating us around the canals of Amsterdam. But that's not the only exciting thing going on. You probably have noticed that the whole YouTube world is lit on fire lately by Canon and Sony. They've been doing some really exciting camera things. But then when we arrived here, I met up with my friend over here. Freik is a cinematographer here in Amsterdam. Oh. It's tiny, right? That is even smaller than I imagined. It's a lot smaller than I imagined, for sure. So I guess I should say it's a, a tiny wrench in my plans, and it's called the Red Komodo. It shoots raw 6K, which is mostly identical image quality and dynamic range to the bigger Red cameras, but it's in a little 4x4 body. You could put a package together for less than $10,000, and it has a global shutter. Freik is a cinematographer here in Amsterdam. He lives in the professional world where I'm always just thinking of like smaller cameras. Like right now we're shooting on the EOS R, which, you know, the size is an important factor because we can bring it on trips like this. But after we got talking, he got me thinking, maybe what I should really be excited about is one of these. You're gonna get me excited about it. Wow, I caught that on tape. Oh, Anya's, no. Anya's gonna be excited about a camera. <laughs> so as we shoot some sample footage, can you tell us uh, why this is going to be so good. First of all, I think it is the first red that takes autofocus seriously. So this is still in beta. Actually, that's important to mention. So all the footage we're going to be looking at, everything here, the software is all beta. The hardware is final, but um, yeah, just take everything with a small grain of salt because of that. I'm not sure that even red knows how much of a game changer this camera could be. It's relatively low price will attract a new segment of filmmakers, but its feature set is pretty unique. You need minimal accessories to get started shooting with it, although its onboard monitor is pretty tiny, but with the Wi-Fi connection, it is so good that we successfully used an iPhone to pull focus. But I have a question. This is maybe one of my biggest sticking points. It does autofocus, but is it gonna be any good? Honestly, I don't really live in the autofocus <laughs> world. You'll need to save some room in your budget for some extra accessories though, like Canon BP batteries, some handles, and big CFast cards because in 6K RAW mode, the Komodo is very data hungry. And you're gonna wanna pair some nice lenses with it, and the RF mount makes it really versatile to adapt. It has a short flange distance, so everything from the EF to the Leica M mounts work perfectly. The only camera I had nearby to compare it with is the Canon R, and although the lenses don't match and this isn't at all a fair comparison, you really can see the difference in dynamic range. Just take a look at her shirt in the lower left. That's why you choose a true cinema camera like this so that the extremes of the image hold up in tough situations. One thing I love about the way that he rigged this is that we just have it going to a V-mount battery in my pocket. I'm steering a boat! <laughs> I'm a real life captain! Anya is discovering her next career. But with so many crazy things happening this year, why would I suddenly get excited about a red, which I've never paid it? any real attention to in the past. Well, meanwhile, there's a portable Sony and Canon that cost, you know, a, a half to a third as much, depending how you build it out. And the a7S III and the R5 and the R6, all of them now shoot 10-bit. That's super important. The R5 shoots raw. All of the specs we've been waiting for are happening, so who cares about red anymore, right? Like, we should be forgetting about these cinema cameras because they're basically just getting replaced. But there's, there's more to it than that. So they do shoot 10-bit. They are gonna be amazing. Most people probably should be buying those cameras. And the reason it's the first time I'm considering one is, yeah, like I mentioned, the price, a red hasn't been this affordable before. Okay, so Frank, what's the cheapest I could possibly get a red for before the Komodo? Around 12K for a shooting Raven package. But I'm not even sure if they're selling the Raven <laughs> anymore because that was only in Apple stores. Right, a very weird situation. Yes. And the Raven wasn't, it was, it was sort of compromised. It was, it was a red sensor, but it was not the same as shooting on the bigger red cameras. Now we basically have a no compromises red sensor. Like this was built to be a crash cam and kind of match up with the other cameras. So it should have about as much dynamic range and perform 
basically as well. The noise is also amazing. The low light samples I've been seeing are fantastic. So until very recently, by choosing to get one of the cheaper reds, you're also choosing to give up a lot. You're not getting all of the image quality that, you know, professional film productions are getting when they shoot red. That's not entirely true, by the way. Freak says that's not true. Okay, why is that not true? Do you feel like the Raven was compet like the, you could shoot a movie on a Raven? Raven did have a Dragon sensor, uh, but it was a crop sensor, and it didn't have PL mount. With the Komodo, you have R mount, and you can attach any lens to it. But I didn't. This crop sensor also reduce image quality, but like you, that's part of why you'd have more noise and lower light, and it did it performed like true. a smaller piece of a proper yes. sensor. Yes. That's correct. All right, well, I don't know that much about Red. <laughs> so now Red seems to have stumbled into having somewhat of a consumer camera. I don't think they want to call it that, and it's a very expensive consumer camera. Like, this is still a professional price point, but not the same as it was before. By the way, I like this uh, technique of using the Cine Saddle. The Cine Saddle is basically a beanbag, but it's very sturdy, and I typically rig it to my Easy Rig vest. So I take the arm of the Easy Rig vest off, and I attach this so I have a nice platform on my belly. I sort of stole it from Christopher Doyle. One thing I'm thinking about as I watch you shoot is that you can also shoot this with nothing else. Just batteries, a CFast card, and a lens, an adapter, but it has a monitor on it. This is never the case before. You have to buy a ton of red stuff. It is life-changing for sure. When do you think you'll choose this over your bigger red camera? Because like you, you still have both. What's your other one? The other one is the Gemini. So when will you shoot the Gemini and when will you shoot this? The little baby well i think if size doesn't matter like if you're doing a sh studio shoot or if i need like a lot of uh, attachments to it then it's nicer to have the bigger body yeah or if i do if i need dual iso or higher so most rates. cinematographers are not thinking about this as a replacement for their current reds but i'll say that they weren't thinking about that when the alexa mini came along either and that ended up shooting like every oscar winning movie for a few years so I don't know, I wouldn't be surprised if this starts showing up in places we didn't really expect or that especially like Red didn't intend it to. Oh, Absolutely. Cool. What is it? It's a parking garage. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, Anya, real question. Can we have the red? <laughs> okay, how did you know? All right, uh, this whole thing is being recorded on a brand new microphone. This is the Deity D4 Duo, and I'm sitting by a very noisy road, so I thought I'd pull it out and talk into it podcast style so you could get a better sense of what it sounds like. And by the way, Gerald Undone, I'm very sorry, but I'm gonna steal a page out of your format book and do the sponsor read by showing off the microphone. A big thank you to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. They have been an amazing supporter of filmmakers everywhere for a long time, and they're an active part of the community. They're not just sponsoring the YouTube videos that you see out there, but there's a reason that they do that. It's because creatives actually use Squarespace. I've been using it for a decade now. It's an amazing place to host your portfolio, your blog, your podcast, whatever your creative pursuits are, Squarespace's tools are flexible enough that they will help you create a presence on the internet. You can have a home base that looks like your own design with minimal work using the responsive templates. And I know you've heard me and other people say this before, but it's true. I built a bunch of different websites using Squarespace. It's so quick and easy, and you really can customize them to look like anything you want. The whole trick of this microphone is that there are two capsules, so if I spin it around, now I'm talking into the other end, and this is how it would be used for vlogging. So you can talk towards and uh, both ways. Whether you already know how to build a website or not, Squarespace is great for you. It's super simple to get started, but it also has in-depth tools so you can really customize anything as much as you want. Then they have those deep analytics to tell you where your traffic sources are, who's looking at your site, how they found you. So if a professional, adaptable, easy to use website is something that would help you out, go to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. You can just start building and customizing and then when you're ready to launch it, go to squarespace.com slash Tyler Stallman and save 10% on your first website or domain by using offer code Tyler Stallman. And, um, and how did this microphone sound? I haven't heard it yet since I, uh, since I started shooting this video. What do you care about in the cameras that we shoot with? Like what, what bugs you when we're using a camera? What do you hate? Dynamic range, the lack thereof. That thing that happens all the time where we shoot with our iPhone and it looks better than with the big camera. Like actually right now, the background's all blown out. Anything else? Uh, the size. 
I don't like I've never really big cameras feel way too big for you yeah and they always have like I am happy that we're together shooting everything because then you can carry the camera <laughs> because after like at first they're not heavy after a day of carrying it around it like really starts weighing on you one thing I would really like to know is how is the movement with this global shutter like when I'm shooting handheld can I be a little more shaky and it feels good because the jello cam goes away I mean, for one thing, I know I can at least stabilize it better, right? Like, if I stabilize that footage, it looks terrible. I never stabilize, by the way. I never use stabilization in uh, Final Cut or anything. But if I were to be going all over the place with this, I should be able to fully stabilize it. Am I, am I right? I don't know. Well, that was a great shoot, but way too short. Thanks for steering us, Captain. And Frank, thanks again for uh, letting us use your... Oh, he's shooting again. Thanks again for letting us play with your camera. And if people want to see your work, where this should they be uh, going? At Freight Films. There'll be links in the description, but if you want to hear more about cameras like this, photography, filmmaking, all that kind of things, you should go to SolomonPodcast.com or just search for Stallman Podcast in your pod player of choice. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video.